Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Stonewall Uprising. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Stonewall Uprising, the fight for gay civil rights. The game is designed by Taylor Schuss, and they have given me this review copy to provide a tutorial solo playthrough for you here. Now in Stonewall Uprising, in the solo mode you are going to be playing as the Pride, going up against the man, and trying to fight for gay civil rights in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. This of course is a very uphill battle as you're trying to court uh, not only public opinion, individual opinion, but also systemic opinion and trying to get it in your favor. And so let's go ahead and go into our setup here. Now the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set up these boards here. These are canvas type boards. They're, they're actually really nice. I like how they set up here and, and on my tablecloth here, they don't move at all. Also, you don't need this market here for the man for the solo mode. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take all four of these squares here. You're gonna place them in the various areas. You'll see these are color coded here. So you're gonna place one red one on the starting position, the S here, one blue one on the star here, and one green one right here. And then you'll place the blue one here on the Overton window. The Overton window will be right here on number 30. And then the last one here is gonna go for the AIDS death track and that'll start on zero. There's also a variety of dice that you can just set aside for now. The red ones are what are called retaliation dice, and the other ones are the normal dice that you can earn during the game, and I'll explain those as it goes on. Then you'll take these double-sided event tokens here, and you'll just set them near the event track. Then we have some extra card tokens, and what are called law tokens, and the S token. You'll also set those aside for now. You'll need to compile the event decks. It'll be three event decks total. So one for the 60s with the solo 60s one here, one for the 70s with the 70s card, and one for the 80s with the 80s. You can just set these aside. I'll keep them in a stack because it's easy to get to them that way. Then shuffle up the solo deck here and just place it in the man deck spot here. For the pride cards, you're gonna remove all of the ones that do not have a letter in the lower left-hand corner. There's gonna be 13 of them, and they're all from the 60s, if that helps. And you're gonna set those aside. You'll shuffle these up, and then you're gonna place them in your pride deck spot here. And then the rest of these here, you're going to separate with the 60s, 70s, and 80s on top of all the different letters in the same stack. So these ones here are all letter A, and we'll set these aside, and you'll line them up in the different areas here. As a note, these deck thinning tokens, you're not gonna need for the game, and neither are you gonna need the man player card. So those will be only for the multiplayer. Then take the first player marker here, and you're gonna have it on the family value side, and we'll set it right here, and it'll flip between each round. All right, so setup is all done. So the gist of this game is it's a deck builder by nature. You're gonna be drawing five cards every round, You'll be playing cards and then choosing when to fold. The AI will also be playing cards. You take turns back and forth playing one card each and the AI will sometimes fold. And so the gameplay happens over rounds and in each round there's four phases. The first phase is the draw and play cards phase. The second phase is to check for the event track and resolve the event. Third phase is the market and the last phase is the discard. When you play a card, you'll look at the card here. Let's say is this one here, and we have Harry Hay. Now it's really interesting and very beneficial to read the flavored text at the bottom here. It gives you historical information and helps set the theme. And so this one says, Harry Hay was the founder of the Mattachine Society. He fought against the assimilationist ideas of early gay rights campaigners. These cards, when you play them, there's two things you need to look for. First, you need to look for this icon here. And what this icon tells you is how much you move that particular track in favor of you. And so these tracks are shown here. We have the individual support, public support, and systemic support. And so if I played Harry Hay here, I would then move the individual support one way in my favor. You'll see there's a dividing line here with the rainbow bar on one side and the gray to black bar here on the other side you're gonna try and buy for control in these various areas by moving these tracks left and right with these cards and the AI's cards. Now there are some cards that have extra bonuses and they'll be ones you buy and later use. So for instance, this one here, 
says that if public opinion is on your side, undetain two people. So you get that bonus along with the bonus here. This one says to move the systemic support three spaces in your favor. So that's really useful. But this one here has a conditional extra ability. So if the public opinion or public support, the blue one here, is on your side, undetained two people. And so right now it's not, so you would not get this bonus. So you wanna time some of those cards that way. Now the AI's cards are also straightforward. They're easy to run. So first of all, you're gonna know what decade you're in. You start off in the 60s, so you'll go to the 70s and then the 80s until the game is done. And so you just do what it says here on the left. That's all you need to do, is whatever it says in the decade that you're in. So in this case here, the AI would move the public support tracker two spaces to the left. And what this shows you here is whether or not the AI is gonna fold. As it plays cards, it's gonna play cards here, and then you're gonna do the next card right on top of it and show, keep showing the hands. Once you've reached four hands or more, the AI is going to fold. So as soon as you're done using this card, the AI would immediately fold and we'd go into the folding action. Now when you fold, there are three different things that happen. First of all, if the AI folds, it's... First of all, whoever folds is gonna move one of the trackers one space in favor of the other. And so in this case here, if the AI folds, it'll move the tracker that shows the icon on the last card it played. So it shows the individual support here. So it would move it one space. Then you are still able to play cards. Any card you play, its card values are doubled, which is really beneficial. But the AI will then get one of these extra card plays for each card you play after the AI has folded. And so what these do is the next round, the AI will first go and use any extra card tokens it has. It will play those extra cards first before normal play resumes. So you really have to be careful how many times you do that because it does give the AI slight advantage. Now on the other hand, you are able to fold as well. And of course you have to move one tracker one space in the direction of the AI. And also the AI will get double the value of its icons on its cards, except for the, the numbers that are in the black with the white border here, like this one says plus two aids death. That would not be doubled. It would just be that amount there. But these here are doubled. And then any other bonuses that aren't in that black square with the white outline would be doubled as well. Of course, you would also gain plus one extra card when you draw your cards for the next round. So if you gain multiple of these, let's say I gain three of these because the AI played three after I folded, then I would draw a total of eight cards. And so you may be wondering, why would you fold? Well, the reason you fold is because any of those unused cards that you have in your hand, those become currency for the market phase. And so you look in their upper left-hand corner and that value in that icon, it doesn't matter which kind of icon, will be the value that you can use to buy new cards. And their costs are shown here. We have cost two, cost four, cost six for those particular rows. Some cards also have a different value. This one says this is a three value card when bought. So that one costs a lot less. But you have to make that decision, are you gonna keep playing cards or do you want more cards to buy stuff, you know, and buy some of the more expensive stuff as well? And really thematically, we are what we are doing is we're not buying help. The people that we don't use for advancement here are used for rallying and recruiting additional help in this movement. And in this game, you will also be recruiting these dice. You'll, you'll gain these dice, you'll be rolling them and keeping them in a pool over here and the, their value will show the amount that you need to bring the Overton window down to. You can end up re-rolling them over time, but this Overton window, you need to bring it down to a certain point, and if your dice value exceeds that point, then you win the game. Now the AI itself is going to detain people and demoralize them over here. And once they have 10 demoralized persons, then the game ends. There is also three different cards in this solo AI deck that when drawn, if the condition is met, the AI wins immediately and you lose. All right, so let's talk about the tracks here and let's talk about uh, detaining people, uh, 
demoralizing people, moving the Overton window. Now, some of these cards that we will purchase will do those things, but a lot of what you're gonna gain here is on these tracks. So you'll notice that these tracks have different bonuses showing here at the bottom. And so in these tracks, you're given opportunities if you can reach these end zones. Any of these colored spaces here are called end zones. And, and the man also has its own end zones. And so when you move a tracker into the end zone, let's say we moved it to this five space here, it says move the Overton window down by X. And X is the number that you're on there. So it would move it down by five, bringing it down to 25 here in this case. Then as soon as you do that, you will then gain one of your event tokens to the event board and you'll place it there and then you'll move this tracker back to its start position. And so on the pride side, you have the option of moving the Overton window. You have the option of gaining dice. So D4s, D6s, D8s and a D10. And then you have the option of undetaining people. So if any of your people are detained here, you will be able to undetain them. Now the AI is gonna be pushing the tracks the other way and try to detain people. Try to move the Overton window up and try to demoralize any detained people. Once people are demoralized, that's it, they're gone. They won't be part of the movement. And of course, when the AI reaches any of the end zones, it too will get an event and it'll place it right here. And so let's go on to talk about events. Once the events have been filled up three times in the 60s, then we will do an event phase during that round. And once it's filled up completely during the 70s and during the 80s, we will do an event phase as well. And so when an event phase happens, whoever has the majority here will be gain the event. And you, for us, we would draw randomly from one of our three cards, but the AI always has the same card every time you play and it'll do what's on that event. And the same thing for the 70s and the 80s. And these are very powerful abilities. Some of them are one-time abilities, some of them last a decade, and some of them change the actual game state. Now the AIDS death track, it'll increase usually in the final 80s uh, decade, but it doesn't affect anything directly except there are some of the loss conditions in the solo deck that will directly relate to that. Also, there's some cards that you can buy that uh, give bonuses based on of how many people have died. And some of the AI abilities also cause detrimental effects depending on how many people have died. And so now we are ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our five cards but the AI gets to go first at the beginning of the game. So we draw the first AI card, and here we go. So this one shows one hand, and it's gonna move the public opinion one space, and it says, if systemic support is on the man side, move the Overton window up one. And so we move public support towards the man one space, according to that icon, and then yes, systemic support is in favor of the man right now. You can see it's on the left side of that dividing line. So it will move the Overton window up one space. Now for my turn, I have a variety of cards here. So I've got a lot of twos available right now and I have to decide like which direction I wanna go. Now this one here wants me to have public support on my side to move the Overton window down by one. That would be kind of nice but I, I'm not gonna be able to get public support on my side this round. And I also have to think about, do I wanna buy cards this round? Like which cards do I wanna buy and how much do I wanna save up for? So right now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this one, the systemic support. So I'll play this card here. It says two, that means I move the systemic support up two. And there we go. But now it's back to the AI's turn. So we flip over the card here. And this card says, if public opinion is on the man side, plus two. So it changes this amount to actually three. So now we have to move that marker three, one, two, three. Now I guess it was good that I moved it ahead of time. It gives me a little more leeway. Now we look at this here, he's got three hands, so he's likely gonna fold next turn. There are some cards that don't have hands, so that it's a possibility he doesn't fold next turn. So the question is, do I wanna spend just this one here, so I have six money to spend next turn, or do I wanna keep going and try and push some things further? 
Maybe I should try to get public support on my side. And so that's what I think I will do. I will move the public support two spaces. Now it's the AI's turn and it is one hand. And this one says, if the Overton window is at 35 plus plus one. Well, it's not, it's only at 31, but it still moves systemic support one space towards the AI here. And at this point they fold. And so if I play any other cards, they will get doubled value, but the AI will get bonus card plays the next turn. Now, since they are folding, they have to move public support one space towards me. So that's kind of nice. Now I have these two in my favor right now. And that really makes me wonder if I should play this one. <laughs> Maybe I should, I, th I think I will. I think it's worth it. Everything gets doubled on here. So this one here, this gets doubled, so it'll be four. And then this gets doubled, so it'll move it down by two because now public support is on my side. So I think it's really worth it. So we'll move this by four. And so it lands in the end zone right now. And since it's in the end zone, I move the Overton window down by X and X is one since that spot. So we move it down by one, move this back to the start and then add one of my markers to the event track. I didn't really want to trigger the event track yet, but I hope this is worth it. And then because of the ability on this card, I move the Overton window down by two. So that's really good. And because I played an extra card after they folded, we give them a plus one card for the next round. Now I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna fold there. And now we're gonna move on to the event phase. We haven't filled up the event track for the 60s yet. So we then go on straight on to the market phase. And now we are going to have this much to spend on new cards, so three total. And so my options are really limited. I can buy one of these cards at the bottom here or this one here, because again, this one says that it's a three value card when buying. So that's kind of nice and it pushes uh, public support my way a lot. But this one also pushes public support my way and it says if individual support is on my side, move the inter Overton window down by one. Oh, it's really tempting. I like the idea of having four. Maybe that's what I should do. So I will buy this one. Now, there is one rule regarding buying cards that you need to know. If you only use two cards to buy a card, that card immediately goes on the top of your deck. It's one or two cards. So if you use three or more to buy cards, they go straight in your discard pile. So that's really nice. I'll be able to use that the next turn. And so we'll discard these cards now and discard the AI's cards. And now we are moving on to the next round and the first player marker goes to me. And so before I do anything, the AI gets to play its extra card. So we just draw the card on top of the deck here and it says move the Overton window up by two, but you discard the card right away. Any of the extra cards they, they get from extra card plays, you just discard right away. And now since it's the new round and I'm first player, I get to draw my cards and play first. And I think I don't want to spend a lot here. I think I want to play cautiously right now. So I'm gonna use Daughters of Bilitis here, and it says, founded in 1955, the Daughters of Bilitis was the first lesbian civil political rights group in the United States. It was conceived as an alternative to lesbian bars which were subject to raids and police harassment. Now we play this one here, and all we're gonna do is move up individual support by one. Now it's the AI's turn, and this one shows no hands, so this is not gonna to count towards their total, and they're only gonna move systemic support one space. Now, of course, they're very much close to the end zones there and they're likely gonna get to the end zone this round. Let's see what happens. And so it's my turn now. And since they haven't had any hand icons, that means several cards might get played. So again, I'm gonna play cautiously here. This time I will play the Kinsey reports and move the public support one space in my direction. And so the next card here is this one and it's gonna move the public support back one space. And of course it has one hand here. Again, I wanna play cautiously. Of course I could fold right now. And that's half tempting, but I think I will play one card before I decide to fold. And that will move individual support one space my way. And the AI's turn here, and they're gonna move systemic support one space in their direction. It says if individual support is on the man side plus one, but no, I have the individual support right now. Now here's the thing, they're gonna move straight into the end zone. And so first thing here is we're gonna give the AI one event token, and then we're gonna activate this ability, detain X number of people. So the way detain works 
is if you have any in your discard, you decide which ones are going to be detained. So I will detain this one here. But if you don't have any in the discard, then you're going to have to draw blindly from the top of your deck however many people are detained. And so they just go in this pile here until you get them undetained or they become demoralized. And then this marker gets moved back to the star position. Now it's my turn. I, I don't know that this is the right move. I don't want to move into the end zone just yet because I don't want to end the 60s. That'll end the 60s right away. And then the 70s, as you can see by these numbers on the AI, become very powerful. And I don't have a powerful deck yet. So I want to be able to buy more cards. So I'm, I'm tempted to either play this one to move public support all the way to the edge of the end zone or to fold. And I don't know if I want to fold because the AI is going to get double the value. Although the values aren't as detrimental in the 60s than later on. So maybe that's what I will do. I will fold. I have to move one of these trackers in their direction. I will move individual support in their direction. And then they will draw cards here. Oh man, this one has no hands. So it doesn't count towards their total. That's going to move their tracker twice by two. Again, doubling that value there. But then we also get a plus one card here for the next round. They're drawing again, and oh wow. So this one, well they're gonna make it to the end of their, their round, but this is gonna move individual sport four spaces. So one, two, three, four. That was kind of detrimental, but we do get another bonus card here. So that's, that's helpful. We move on to the event phase, and the event track is not full yet, so we're good there. We have six total recruitment power, and let's see if we can't recruit something good. I really like the idea of this card here, the freedom of speech, if public opinion is on your side, undetain two people, and it's good for systemic support, which I haven't had much of an impact on. So I think I will buy that one. That cost four. The next one, I have, I have two left, so I wanna buy one of these two here. And I think I will get Marsha P. Johnson here because it helps manipulate the Overton window. And so both of these go on top because I only spent two cards. And so now we discard everything and we're gonna flip over this token here. And yeah, this is gonna be good because now we get to draw seven cards. Let's see, we have six here, so we will have to shuffle this. Again, we draw seven cards because we had two bonus card draws from the AI playing more cards past our time of folding. It is the AI's turn, however, and let's see what they're gonna do. And they're gonna use, uh, oh man, they're gonna do systemic support, which is gonna move this into the end zone. That's really unfortunate. It moves the Overton window up by one. And now that means that they are gonna get their second marker on the event track, which gives them a majority for the decade. Now we finish out the decade here, so I'll still get a chance to play cards, but the unfortunate thing is that they're gonna get their event card, which is always detrimental. So we definitely wanna manipulate some of these tracks while we can. I think the first track I wanna do is this one here. So it says freedom of speech, if public opinion is on your side, undetained two people. So I move it three spaces. Sorry, I forgot where this was, I think it was 32. But public opinion is on my side, so I do get to undetain this person here. And it will normally be randomly, but there's only one person, so that'll go straight into my discard pile. Now it's the AI's turn. And they have one hand symbol, so that makes three. They're gonna move the public support one space. And if the Overton window is at 35, it gets plus one. Well, it's not, it's at 32. I accidentally bumped that earlier, so it might be 31, but I erred in the side of caution putting it at 32. Now it's my turn, I'm gonna play Countrywide Organization. That's gonna move individual support two spaces in my favor. And then it's the AI's turn here. And they have two hands here, this means they will fold. They're gonna move this one space. And it says if individual support is on the man side, plus two. Oh man, so it moves it two spaces. Now they do fold, so they're gonna move individual support one space in my favor. And then the question is, do I wanna save this to buy new cards? I have a total of seven here, and that might be worth it. I mean, effectively, I'll probably wanna buy a six cost card or a four cost card. But here's the thing, when the decade ends, we're actually gonna be removing all the 60s cards from the market before I buy new cards. So if I wait and save these for recruitment, then I will gain some really good cards. So maybe that's what I will do, I will wait. And so now we go on to the events. Now I'm not gonna get any of my events, but the AI is gonna get their 60s event here. 
And so this event says, move the Overton window up by four. Ouch. So that's gonna bring it all the way up to 36. And then we remove these event trackers here. And then I'll remove all the 60s cards from the tops of these decks. All right, so now we're ready to go into the market phase. I do have seven recruitment power and I really have to decide which ones I wanna get here. I think I'm not doing so well on individual support if I wanna move the Overton window down. So I think I will buy this one here. Now this one's pretty cool. It says place a retaliation die on a card in the man's market. If they bury it, buy that card, add that die to your dice pool and then re-roll your dice pool. Now this brings up a, a thing about retaliation dice. In the solo mode, instead, what happens is you place it on one of the tracks here on the left. And once the AI reaches an end zone in one of those tracks, you gain this die to your dice pool. You'll roll this die and re-roll the dice in your dice pool. So that's really nice. I, I definitely want one of those cards. These both do that, but since I need some individual support right now, that's the one I will buy. It goes in my discard pile. And so I still have three left to purchase. And now I can only buy one of these two here. And I think I will buy this one here. Now this one's effect doesn't uh, matter in solo play. It only matters in multiplayer play. So I won't read that there. But this one's definitely worth it, I think, because it'll give me three towards public support. So these all go in my discard pile, as well as the rest of this, since we're discarding and going on to the next round. And I will start the next round as first player. And so we draw five cards. Let's see what we get this time. And we do have our four public support card. That could be useful, might be useful early on, but I'm worried about the systemic support right now being so close on their side. So I'm gonna play this one first, moving systemic support by two and then their turn. Now we are in the seventies now. So we go with the middle one here. And so uh, they become progressively more powerful. This one in particular, moves systemic support one space and public support two spaces. Sorry, I mean individual support. I am kind of worried that individual support is that close, so I will play this one and it'll move it back up one space. And now it's the AI's turn and, oh man, another card with no hands. And they do move the individual support two spaces. That's not good. Well, let's see, maybe I should get an advance on the public support side and let's go with the four one this time. I know I should probably save that for buying stuff, but I think I'll do that. And it puts it all the way up there. Now it's the AI's turn. And finally, they have one hand here. Now they are gonna move the public support back two spaces. So that was a good play for me. I will move it back two spaces. Again, fighting for that side there because I need to start getting some of these dice. And then they're going to play one here, <laughs> moving it back three spaces. Actually, this card says if the Overton window is at 25 or more, plus one. So it's four spaces back. Ouch. Feels like I didn't progress at all. I will play my last one here. And that will move public support one space again. And then the AI's turn. And they get to demoralize one person. Okay. So now we look over here and there's nobody detained. So the AI can't demoralize anybody. In this case, any of the people that it wants to demoralize but can't, it detains instead. So we will look at our pile here and detain one of these cards and we will detain this card here. And that's unfortunate, but that's how that goes. And so now the AI folds and it's gonna move individual support one space in my favor. We check the event track. The event track hasn't been touched yet, thankfully. We don't want to jump into the 80s right away. I, I feel like I'm losing this game the way the Overton window is right now. And then we go on to the market phase. Well, I don't have any recruitment power this time. So I don't get to buy anything. And the AI and I discard our cards. We flip this over and we'll start a new round. Now, I do need to draw five cards, but I only have three. So I will shuffle this. And let's see what we got. Not a lot to work with this time. I guess we're going to be working on individual support and a little bit of public support. That's good though, individual support's kind of low, but let's see what the AI draws for its first card. All right, so three plus one because the Overton window is past that threshold. So it's gonna move this four spaces, one, two, three, four. That is too close for comfort. So I think it's best that I play this one and move it back up three spaces. I really don't want them to trigger any event tokens right now. And now it's their turn. 
oh wow, full stop here. They're, they're, gonna, they're gonna fold this around and they move uh, public support back four spaces. Thankfully, it doesn't trigger the end zone. And then they're going to fold and move systemic support one space in my favor. Very nice. I would think I'm going to take advantage of that fold here. I will get a total of seven. That'll be good for buying some cards. The question is, do I want to just go big this time and buy a six cost card? This one here gives five. This one gives four. I really do think I need more public support though. I need to get this Overton window moved down. So I will buy this one again. This is the Gay Liberation Front. And so that, that's also gonna afford me some opportunities to get retaliation dice. I think that's definitely worth it. So these are all gonna go in my discard. The AIs are gonna go in its discard and we'll flip this over and start another round. And now it's my turn. Let's see, hopefully I get some of my really good cards here. Yeah, all right. Do I want to worry about public support now, or do I want to play this and get a retaliation die in place? I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, let's do that. So I will play this one here. It moves individual support four spaces in my favor, and then I can place the retaliation dice in one of the spots. I will place it in public support, because it's likely they're gonna hit the end zone with this, so then I will gain that die. Now it's the AI's turn and they're going to move systemic support two spaces in their favor, and that's all they're doing for their turn. That's not too bad, because I can counter that, and I think I might. Ooh, maybe I should use this one. This one says, if individual support is on your side, move the Overton window down by one. I could use that, but I may want to wait. I, I think I'll play this card now, and this card is going to move systemic support three spaces in my favor, and undetain two people. Oh no, I don't have public support, so I can't undetain two people. All right, and so this card gets drawn here. And so this card here, this one's an interesting one. So it's gonna move individual su support four spaces in their favor, but I may return a retaliation die from the board to the supply to ignore the above number. Oh, that is really tempting, isn't it? You know, moving this back four spaces, that's a lot. I don't really have cards to counter that right now. So is it worth it to remove this die? I, I'm gonna risk it and say yes. So now that doesn't go into play. That's really nice. All right, so now do I wanna fold or keep going? I think I wanna keep going. I will play this one now. That's gonna move the public opinion up two and the Overton window down by one. Now it's the AI's turn and this'll be the last card they play. And it says uh, two in the individual support, so that moves down. And it says, if Pride's last card moves systemic support, detain one person. Well, it didn't. My last card moved public support, so that's good. So now it's folding, and it'll move uh, public support one space in my favor. And so I, too, will fold, and we'll go into the market phase. I have a total of four recruitment power, and it's only two cards, so it'll go on the top of my deck here. So the question is, what do I want to get? I can't buy anything from here. These are 80s cards now, so you can't buy anything that's not a decade that you're in. So either I buy this one here, or I buy these, one of these, or both of these actually. And I'm really tempted to get both of these. Three in each of those areas would really help me the next round to push those up a little bit. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy both of those, and they're gonna go on the top of my deck. And then we discard our cards, as well as the AIs. Now the AI is gonna be the first one to go next round. We'll see how this goes. We'll draw our five cards here. Now you notice we haven't pushed the events yet. One of the things about this game is if you push the events too hard, you just never get a good enough deck to counter the 80s when they are, look at this one here. It says two in systemic support and four in individual support. That's a lot to counter. I'm not ready to try and counter that yet. But let's flip over the AI's first card here. And it says demoralize one person. Oh man, well this person here is now demoralized and forever out of the game. Again, if they have 10 here, I lose the game. Now it's my turn, let's see what we have. We have some good options here. Definitely some good options. I, I think I'm gonna start off with public support. I wanna move that in my favor, so we're gonna move it up four spaces to that space there. Now it's the AI's turn, and they are gonna move public opinion back. And it says if systemic support is on the man's side, detain one person. It's not, it's on my side right now, but they will move this back two spaces. And so I'm at a dilemma here. 
I could use these right now or save these to buy better cards. That's really a tough choice. Maybe I played safe right now and I played this one here to move individual support one space in my favor. Now we draw the AI's card and they're gonna put uh, individual support back three spaces and they would detain one person if public opinion was on their side, but it's not. They are gonna fold though, and it's gonna move the systemic support one space in my favor. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is that anytime somebody folds, you can't move a tracker into the end zone. So keep that in mind. And with that, I will fold as well. I have these cards here and I will buy some new cards. Actually, I'm gonna buy one six cost card and I think I'm gonna go with this one. This one's worth five public support, and I think that's worth it. Now, I paid three cards, so it's going to go in my discard pile. But we'll see if that uh, that works out for me later. And now the AI discards its cards, and we flip this over. We're going to draw cards. We only have four here, so let's shuffle. All right, we're going to draw our last card here. Oh, wow. A lot of low cards. Not a lot of effort during this year. <laughs> this is not going to go too well. But let's play, I think, none of these have special abilities either. But let's play this one here. We'll move this one up two spaces. Now it's the AI's turn, and they're gonna move systemic support two spaces. And it says if Pride's last card moves systemic support, detain one person, but it wasn't. My turn now, and I think I'll move, I'll do this one here. Move it up one space. Cause now if I play this one, then I will get up to a D6. And that's kind of what I want to do right now. And so the next card here is, oh wow, they're going to fold right now. They're going to move a systemic support four spaces. Wow. And they're folding, which is going to move public support one space. Ooh, this is really tempting. Because if I play this one right now, that value is doubled and I will get a D10. But they will get an extra card next round. And I also get an event marker. Oh, I think that's worth it. So I will play this one here. It'll move it to the end. I will gain a D10 die. And so you gain the die and you just roll it right away. Wow, a two. But you know, you're gonna re-roll them later, but that that is really nice that I got a D10. And so this moves back to the starting space here. I gain one event to the event track. Now again, in the 70s and 80s, you need to fill this up with five markers. And if you're not careful, it can go really fast. As you can see right now, everything is now on their support. <laughs> and so it could go real bad real fast, especially since they start first next round and they get the extra card. We'll see how this goes. And so I will fold at this point. I have two points to spend. And I can buy just this card here, and I think I will. it will go on top of my deck here. And we'll discard these now. We'll discard these two here. There's no events to manage right now. We'll flip this over, and before we do anything, we draw the extra card for the AI. So the extra card here is going to move, oh man, systemic support, three spaces. And plus one, because the Overton window is past 25. So four spaces, it's going to bring it to number three here. Oh no, so it's gonna detain three people. And so it'll detain cards from here. We'll detain these three here. They are lower cards, but that's a lot of cards to detain. So I hope we don't have a lot of demoralization here coming up. Now this gets discarded. I do draw my five cards now, just to see what we get here. And still not a lot to work with. I did forget to move this back to the start here. But now it's the AI's turn. And oh man, all right. So three in systemic support again. And then Pride may return a retaliation die from the board to the supply to ignore the above number. Well, there are no retaliation dice on the board. Oh, I do notice one thing. I forgot to give it an event marker. So the man gets an event marker here. And now we're tied up on event markers. Now it's my turn. I don't want to give him a chance on systemic support. I will play this one here, moving it back three spaces. And it's their turn now, and uh, they will move it back three spaces again. On top of that, since public support is on their side, they're going to detain one of my people. And they will detain this one here. Oh man, I don't like seeing my people detained. And so with my turn here, what do I want to do? Maybe I should spend this one to move individual support my way. I think I'll hedge my bets that way. And then it's their turn and th oh, they're gonna move individual support back two spaces. So that kind of worked out. Now they only have three hands, so they're gonna keep going. So what do I wanna do here? There's not many cards left to buy. 
I guess I could fold and save for this one, but they're gonna double whatever value they get there. I don't know that that's worth it. So I will play this one here, moving this up two spaces. And now it's the AI's turn. All right, so they're gonna, oh man, they're gonna detain three more people. There's only one in my discard, so that one's detained. And then they detain two off of the top of my deck and I have no idea who they are right now. But they do fold here, moving individual sport one space in my favor. And I fold, but I, I can't buy anything. There are no two cost cards from the 70s here, so I can't buy anything. So everything gets discarded now as well as the AI, and we flip this over and move on. So I have my five cards here. All right, finally, we got some good cards to work with here. And so the first one here is this one, Sylvia Rivera. It says, Sylvia Rivera was a drag queen who with Marsha P. Johnson founded STAR, a group that advocated for and supported homeless LGBT youth. That's great. And so we're gonna, we're gonna utilize her efforts to move individual support into the end zone. And it's gonna move the Overton window down by five. That is really good. On top of that, I will be able to place a retaliation dice on here and we'll place it here. On top of that, we move this marker back to the start. I will gain an event token here. And now it's the AI's turn and they're gonna, oh man, they're gonna move individual support, three spaces in their favor. If Overton window is at 25 or more, it's plus one, so one more, wow. I, I'm definitely gonna counter that with the Gay Liberation Front. And we're gonna place, play this one here. It's gonna move it back up four spaces and add another retaliation die. So I will place it uh, with systemic support. I'm gonna hedge bets that they're gonna move into the end zone on systemic support and I will gain both those dice. And now it's the AI's turn. And it says, repeat the last Autumn a card play, then reshuffle the deck. If there are no cards in the discard, play the next card in the deck, and then reshuffle all Autumn cards at the end of the round. This card has as many hands as it copies. All right, so it's gonna do this one again. Again, moving this back four spaces. And so we have to reshuffle the deck right now, which I will do. And now it's my turn. I definitely don't want them getting the individual support there, so I will play this one moving it back up three spaces. And now it's their turn again. And this one's gonna move public support this time. It'll move it two spaces. It says if individual support is on the man side, which it is, detain one person. Oh man, all these people are getting detained. I have to really be careful with this here. And so they have three hands now. Again, this one counting as this one here. So that's three. It's still my turn. I'm not worried about buying anything this next round. And I guess I will play this one. I know it goes against what I was planning on doing, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then this one here, ah, there we go. All right, so three. And then if individual support is on the man side, detain one person. It is. Okay, so let's play this out. First, it's gonna move into the end zone. It's gonna detain one person. So this one here gets detained. Then it's gonna add an event token here, moving this back up to the start position. It'll detain an additional person. So this one here, and then it's folding because it has four hands now and it's gonna move public support one space in my direction. On top of that, I do gain both of these retaliation dice since it activated that end zone. I roll everything here and let's see what I get. I have a three, two, and a four. That puts me at nine. I need to get to 30 right now. So we definitely need some more dice. And I too will fold. I cannot buy anything right now. And so these cards will just get discarded. We'll flip this over, start a new round. I do have five cards to draw here. And, but it's the AI's turn first. And so they are going to, wow, oh man, this is not good. So they're gonna move straight into the end zone again. So it moves four here into the end zone. And it says if public opinion is on the man side, detain one person. It's already gonna detain one there, detain one here. Let's see, that's two people that I'm about to lose right now. So these two get detained. On top of that, it finished an event. So it gets its final event token. So at the end of this phase, we will go into the event round and straight on into the 80s. This of course gets put back at the start position. And now it's my turn. Let's see, I definitely need to work on individual support and public support. I need to get some dice. Let's move in that direction. So let's play this one here. That moves it four spaces. So one, two, three, four. 
and that's in a good position there. Now it's AI's turn. They'll play one card, moving the systemic support three spaces. And then if Overton window is above 25, it'll move it one more. And it sure does. Now, here's the thing. Once the event track is full, you don't add any more or change the event track at all. But he still gets a bonus from that. So it's going to detain one person. And I don't have too many cards left here to detain, I guess. One of these ones here will be detained. Wow, I have a lot of cards detained. This is not looking good. It's my turn here. I think I will play this one here, moving three on that track. So next turn, if I can play this one, then I will get another D10. I think that's gonna be worth it. And so we flip over the next card. No hands on this one, which might be good because now I can play that card without any penalty. And so we will move this two spaces that way. So let's play that card, let's do it. So five. It'll move this all the way to the 10. I will get this D10, and then we're gonna re-roll these dice. That's really good. Let's see if we get a better roll. A three, a seven, a four, and a one. All right, that's 15. That's not bad at all. And of course, we move this back to the start here. Now it's AI's turn, and oh man. This one, they're gonna move into detaining more people. This is really not good. Oh, so I'm gonna lose some of these. I don't know what to lose. I, d I don't want to lose this one. So definitely this one. And I guess one of these. Wow, this is not good. This is really not good. I, I need to undetain some people somehow. And so this moves back to the center and they do fold. So public support goes one space my way according to this card here. And now we're going to go into the event phase. Wow, I, I, I know what's coming because I've seen this event and it's really detrimental. So the event for the AI is to detain four more persons. This, this is not good. All right, so I lose two here. That's all I have left to lose. My, my deck is almost out of cards. Well, I mean, I don't have anything in the pride or discard, so these two get detained. I am, I am running out of room here to work with. <laughs> And now these event markers get removed. And of course, we'll remove the 70s cards that are on these spots here, revealing all the 80s cards. And so the 80s cards will be here the rest of the game. And we're gonna be in the 80s the rest of the game. We'll still resolve events, but we won't be discarding these cards any further. But now we go into the market phase, and I do have a total of four to spend. I definitely want more cards. I'm so low on cards right now but I don't have anything for systemic support. This is really tough right now. But this one lets me possibly undetain people. So maybe I just, maybe I just try my best to go for the public support and the individual support in hopes that I gain enough dice. Let's, let's try this, we'll see how this goes. So these two go in my draw pile, these go in my discard pile, these will get discarded and we flip this over and start a new round. Okay, now I don't have enough cards to draw. I have two, so I'm gonna have to shuffle these up here and let's see how we do. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's not looking good. Now I haven't won this game yet and it, I don't think you're really meant to because you know, in the 60s, 70s and 80s, the, the gay civil rights movement, the LGBTQ civil rights movement did not succeed. But as the rule book says, and as the designer says, they didn't succeed yet and they will later and they and they have and they have right now sorry i'll save my commentary for my uh, first impressions video but that's something to keep in mind i've got a lot of really good cards to play with here and i do get to go first so the question is, is do i want to move myself into position to really gain more dice or move the overton window i can't mo move the overton window much i think the first thing i'm gonna do is play this one here and move it four spaces this way. Now it says I can undetain one person for every two AIDS deaths. There are no AIDS deaths yet, but they will be coming. They come in the 80s here. And so the first card for the AI, oh man, is to move individual support six spaces. Wow, so that brings it to three here. Demoralize X detained people. This is no good, this is no good. Uh, so what you do is you shuffle this deck up because we, we already know what cards we put on top. So if you shuffle this deck up, then you're gonna draw however many, so three people. So one, two, three, demoralized. Wow, that is really unfortunate. On top of that, sorry, I put the wrong tracker here. It's the, the man tracker and this gets moved back. Now I forgot to mention one thing about the 80s. 
The 80s, you actually put this start marker here in this place here. It says place to token in the 80s because this can be moved. It can be moved by this card here and this card here. So it'll be moved in your direction. So when this one reaches the end, it gets it starts further along on the right side. So that's really nice if you have that option. Now, the, I think because they have three hands here, they might only have one more card play. So I wanna maximize my card play here and play this one. It'll move this five spaces. So I will get a D8. And so we'll gain that D8 here. And then we're gonna re-roll all these dice. Let's see, I have a one, three, two, two, and a six. So that puts me at 14. So this of course moves back to the start here and I will gain an event token. Now it's the AI's turn. Oh man, no hands here. They are gonna move three spaces to the left here on the individual support. Well, I do think we need to counter that. So we're gonna play this one here, moving it back four spaces here. Now this one here has a bonus that says, if there are two or more law tokens on the board, you may immediately re-roll your dice pool, add three to all the rolls of your pool this round. There are no law tokens on the board, so that doesn't come into play. Law tokens are these three tokens here. They get placed on the board by the AI, and when, you, when the uh, token lands on them, they do certain things, and they tell you here at the bottom. I actually have not had to use them yet. So now it's the AI's turn and let's see what they have. All right, so they're gonna move public support two spaces in their direction. And then if individual support is on their side, they demoralize one person. Thankfully it's not. Now they are folding right now, moving individual support one space in my direction. That's actually really good for me. Now I do have six recruitment power to use in the market phase because I will fold right now. And so what do I want to get? Whichever card I get right now is gonna go on top of the deck. And I, I my deck is so small. I definitely need more cards. So I think I'm gonna go with one of the four cost cards and one of the two cost cards. So maybe I'll buy this one here. This is the one that says, when you buy this card, move the S token one space towards the pride side. So it moves it up one space here. And then the other one here, I'll buy this one here because I want to balance out these two uh, kinds of cards. So these two actually go on top of my deck. That'll be really good. These get discarded, of course, as well as the AI. We flip this over and moving on to the next round. Now I only have four cards here, so I will have to shuffle these. But the AI gets to go first and their first uh, order of business is to really be detrimental right now. Okay, so they move systemic support two spaces and public support two spaces into the end zone. It'll move the Overton window up by one and they will, on top of that, will gain one event token here. I've not gained any of my events so far this game. I really need one from the 80s. So we're gonna try and get that. Now this moves back up to the star position here. All right, so let's check out my cards. Not too bad for what I have. I think I'm gonna try and move the Overton window up. So I'm gonna play this one here. This one will move individual support by five spaces here, which gives me the chance to move the Overton window down by five. So it brings it down to 26. Really close to what I can do. Cause right now my potential actually is over 26 if I roll really well. So that's really good. This will go back to the start, of course, and I will gain an event token here. Now it's the AI's turn, and they're gonna move public support three spaces in their direction and cause one aide's death, as shown down here at the bottom. So that moves this marker here one space. Now I'm trying to play my cards right, ha ha ha, and I'm gonna play this one and move this into this zone end zone here. That, of course, will move the Overton window down by one, but on top of that, that gives me the third event token for this round. And that means I have the majority for this decade. So we will get an event out of there and the AI won't. But it is still their turn and they only have one hand. Oh, now they have four. It says reset any tracks that are on the pride side to the start space. That's not bad at all, actually. They're either on the man side or on the start space here. And on top of that, they fold and moving the individual support one space to the right. Wow, that's really good. Because now we're gonna go on to the event. So th the event is gonna be for me. We'll discard these here. And then I draw one randomly. I've already shuffled these here. So let's see what these are. I actually haven't got an 80s event card yet. It says Reagan concedes AIDS failures. Move the Overton window down by two. So we move it down. Whenever the Overton window moves down this decade, double how far it moves down. If it would normally move down two, it moves down four instead. Oh, this is really good. So it lasts the decade, 
which we are in the 80s until the end of the game. So this is really good. Uh, on top of that, I get to buy some cards here. I have a total of nine resources to spend. Wow. How about we get this one here that gives uh, six to public support. I think I put my draw pile in my discard here. So this one goes in the discard. That costs six. And I might as well gain this one as well for two. And that's all I can gain this market. But that's really good. I actually, I might have a chance here. I, I really need to push public support right now because then I will gain a die and roll all my dice. My dice are kind of low right now, so I definitely want to do that. Of course, we have to discard the AI, flip over the token, and we get to start the round. Now I have four cards here. Let's go ahead and shuffle these. And then I'm drawing one card here, and let's see what we have. Ooh, all right, so here we go. Some really good options here. Now, right now, right now, let's see. If I move, if I use this one, it goes to here, to the three, and that doubles, so six. So it'll bring the Overton window down to 17. What am I at right now? I'm at 14. Oh, that's tempting. But I have to be careful about the AI getting public support here. So I definitely want to move public support back. Yeah, I think I do. So we're gonna move it five spaces to here. Now it's the AI's turn. And the AI is going to demoralize one person. We've already randomized this deck, so we'll just take one person and put it there. And add one's AIDS death and move this back five spaces. Wow. I guess it was helpful because it, they would have moved the Overton window up by three spaces. And so now it's my turn and I have to be pretty cognizant of the fact that they're going to fold soon. But maybe it's worth it. Let's see what we can do here. Let's use this one, right? So this one is four, moves it up four spaces. So it brings it right here. And then undetain one person for every two AIDS deaths. There's two AIDS deaths right now. Then we get to look in the detain deck and decide which card we want. And so I think we definitely want this one here. That, that's gonna be good. We'll shuffle this again in case we have to demoralize anyone. I hope not. Now it's the AI's turn. And they're going to move individual support three spaces and demoralize one person, which we just randomized, and plus one AIDS death. Now for my turn, I'm going to play this one, moving this two spaces. And the reason why I did this is because if they fold next uh, card, I'm going to play both of these and see if I can't win the game. And so they draw a card here, and they are going to fold. They're going to move public support, though, four spaces. So that doesn't really work in my favor. And if there are four or more AIDS deaths, plus one. There are only three. And so what do I do? Do I use these now, gaining the double bonus, right? putting public support up eight spaces, which won't gain me anything. No, I don't, I don't think it's, well, I think it's worth it for one card. I think I will do it for one card. This is a really risky move because they're gonna get an extra card starting the next round. So effectively they get to play twice before I do anything, but that puts it all the way up to right before the end zone. I definitely think that's worth it. I did forget to move up individual support because they folded. And so now I will fold. I have this card here to spend. It's a four cost card and I will buy this one here, place it on top of my deck. And so these all get discarded as well as the AI. And we'll flip this over and start possibly the final round of the game. And so the first thing we do is the extra card for the AI and they will gain four, oh man, to public support. I guess it could be worse. So this one gets discarded and this token gets discarded. And now we start the round like normal. Of course, I need to draw five cards here. So we have our five cards. This is what we have to work with, which is really good. So let's see if we can pull this off. So this one here flips over. And so they're gonna move individual support five spaces. Ouch, one, two, three, four, five. That is really unfortunate. It says if there are four AIDS deaths plus two, but there are only three still. So now with my turn, I do think I need to move that public support back in my favor a little bit here. So we'll place it back up five spaces. Now it's the AI's turn. They're gonna move individual support, three spaces, one, two, three. And now if the individual support is on the man side to demoralize one person, ouch. So now they have, wow, seven demoralized persons. If there are three more, I lose the game. My turn, I will play this card here. So it'll move this up four spaces right before the end zone here. And then I will undetain one person for every two AIDS deaths. 
All right, so there's only uh, three deaths, so I get to undetain one person. Might as well be, I thought I had one more four in here. Oh, it must've got demoralized. So I guess I'll take this one here. Now it's the AI's turn, and uh, they're gonna move this back down four spaces, and if there are four more AIDS deaths plus one. Now they do move the individual support up one space because they folded, and now I have to decide, do I wanna play any of these? They'll get double the value. So if I play this one here, it'll move it up to the end. I, there aren't any more D10s, so I would gain a D8 instead, and, but I get to reroll all this. Oh, that's so tempting. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll play this. I will get the final D8 here, and then we're gonna reroll these dice. Let's see how this goes. So I roll them here. We have a six, a six, a five, a four, a three, and a three. I think I won. <laughs> wow, let's see. 10, 21, 27 against the Overton window of 23. And so there you have it, I won the game. And it says in the rule book that if the pride player wins, the LGBTQ rights are brought into focus and taken seriously, making more progress sooner than anyone could have ever expected. Wow, what a great end to this game. I, that was definitely a, a huge tug of war. I thought I had it lost. We were probably one or two cards away from losing. Yeah, this one was, yeah, this one was pretty close actually. Let's see, oh, check this out. So this one says, if there are eight plus persons detained, Pride loses. I was literally one card away from losing because there are nine here. Yeah, so, <laughs> wow. What a close game, that was so great. And so there you have it, that was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Stonewall Uprising, the fight for gay civil rights. You have to ask me any questions in the comments below or point out any mistakes I may have made. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description and I thank everyone who's supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.